Hi. it is lovely for you to be here with me. I'm very excited to chat about your work. I think the best place to start that everyone gets to know you is can you give us a kind of brief overview of your life up to now, kind of your introduction into art? Was it always around you, like as a child, for example? Kind of, um, but I guess at school I loved art. Um, and I'm of an age where like, my dad worked for like, Rolls-Royce and the, the Aero engines, and he'd come back with loads of computer paper, which like, was like concertina paper, so I'd be drawing little pictures and stuff. And I liked art at school, but um, got to A-level art, and the teacher wanted me to do kind of graphics and stuff, and I just wanted to paint, so came out of a D, failed. Oh, no. um, and uh, at that time as well, you know, art wasn't seen as a route for a career or anything, so went down the route of uh, marketing and and uh, uh, and really kind of still loved art, um, but didn't really do anything until lockdown. So in lockdown, because um, obviously you were yeah. stuck in your house, I, um, I still had some acrylic paints from my A-levels from 1994. Oh, wow. So like, and they still worked. So I bought a, a canvas and uh, I just started painting. Um, and I was like, oh, I forgot how much I loved this. And then I just kind of, from that, I just started painting again. So, so the journey was like, I loved art, um, not from a family of artists, although my parents last night, because they always tell you things at the last minute, <laughs> it turns out that my great aunt has an art prize named after her at Dundee University, and she was like a successful artist. I'm like, why did you never tell me about her? <laughs> you could have loved that information so, before, could yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's, you know, yeah, so it's in your but, it's, but yeah. it's obviously there, and I've come back to it, and now I'm not leaving it under. The, okay, it's fine. Definitely part. I know. In fact, I haven't painted since about a week ago, and I'm like, I really want to paint. So really, yeah. so it's so it's so interesting, and I I've definitely spoken to other artists in this prize. I've had a quite a similar story. Kind of loved it as a child, left it for years, then came back to it with like a new, like really renewed sense of like energy for it. When you kind of like picked up that first kind of canvas in lockdown. What was the inspiration behind that first bit of artwork? You yeah, did? I mean, because I live in Bristol and it's, you know, you've got the, the water and the harbour and the, the, all the colourful houses. And I was just like, one, our walls in the house. We'd, we'd kind of, just before lockdown, refurbed and the walls are all empty. So I was like, I want to put something on that wall. Can't afford a painting. I'll just paint one myself. <laughs> and uh, I painted like the scene of the Bristol Harbour with oh, all the lovely. boats and the houses. But, you know, being an impractical person, you know, your first painting for about 20 odd years, I bought like a meter by one and a half meter canvas. and was like, OK, I'll use my 30 year old paints and see how we get on. So that's kind of, <laughs> that, that was it. And then it was like, and I was like, how do you scale up like a picture onto something yeah. like that? So and what I found was like, what well, I don't know what we learned at school, really, because like just YouTube is like, oh, you just draw a grid and then you. And sort of yeah. just got going. I was like, oh, this is much easier when you sort of just take ownership of it rather than trying to do it to basically please the teacher or what have you. Yeah, that's it. Did that cameras make it up on the wall? Yeah, it's on the wall. It would have been in the collection, but I was like, oh, no, it's too, I don't want to lose it. It's too yeah, much. that's it's a real kinda... personal yeah, one. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like your hometown. It's also the first painting that kind yeah. of got you back into this world. So once you kind of like got that up on the wall and you're like, great, we're back, baby. What are the kind of influences for your art, would you say, kind of in general, like in a kind of overview? Yeah, I mean, I um, I, I think it's, it's funny how, like, you kind of don't go, I want it to look like this. You just sort of paint, and it is what it, whatever comes out of you, and it's like a certain style, but I guess it's quite, I kind of, my influences would be the likes of um, Edward Hopper, and I think, and I like that, uh, there was another guy, um, Gustav, I can't remember his surname though, but I remember going to our A level, went to Paris, and it was all the Impressionists. And then there was this one guy who, Gustav, not, not as well known, yeah. uh, Calabone or something like that. Um, and there was this painting that was, that was called the, the, um, uh, the Floor Scrapers. Um, and it's just three guys scraping the floor, but it was a light and it looked like almost like, not photorealistic, mm. but it had a, it was that kind of hinterland between like realism and like, uh, kind of painterly mm -hmm. and I really liked kind of that so I and I do like color I like like, it, like you you know if you want a photo take a photo yeah. but like you can bring things alive a bit with yeah. paint so the artists I like are, are those kind of the quite colorful there's a Scottish group Scottish color colorists um, from the 
they were like contemporaries of Edward Hopper, and they're very much like when I look at their paintings, I'm like, I'm kind of kind of like that. Yeah. But so I think that's kind of where I go. I do look at the like realist painters, and I'm like, that's amazing. I just don't have the patience for that. Oh, like all those details and yeah, it's like you know, I maybe sometimes go, oh, make that look realistic, and then I'm like. Actually, I prefer how that looks as it is. Yeah. So then I kind of go, well, it, it, like the painting sort of tells you where to go half the time. It's like, a bit more fun, I suppose, as well. I guess so, yeah, yeah. Not so, so constraint. Yeah, so I think, you know, and uh, we were talking earlier and I said about how I liked architecture, and I think there's a little bit of precision, yeah. but not um, but not really. So it's a sort of like a middle ground, really, of, 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 of wanting to like, depict the place or the area but bring a story to it as well so we've been used to a bit of color and, and and you know just a little bit of painterliness but enough that it's not abstract i, yeah. I love abstract but i'm like I, I i would struggle to come up with the story that I, that's true <laughs> and you're like what's the story behind this and you're like oh, lord knows it's so yeah, yeah 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 so is it more kind of um buildings landscapes that's kind of where you sit yeah uh, buildings lands landscapes i do like to um it's like, a, I like uh, mundanity a little bit. And also we're living in Bristol, it's, you know, it's the home of Banksy, it's street art, and there's really vibrant like um, graffiti. And some of my paintings, I quite like the, the juxtaposition of like, you've got like the suspension bridge and Clifton, yeah. which is very pretty. And then you've got like graffiti, um, but the graffiti really kind of punches and it, let, it sort of sits really nicely alongside it because some people would look at that and go, that looks a mess, but I like I I kind of like the fact that it's it's sort of more egalitarian like street art because it's there's no rules. People just tell stories through through it, and it's a bit more honest. And that's more what Bristol is rather than yeah. you know, the, the Victorian Bristol. That's not yeah. Bristol now. So I I like that. I like that kind of the things that people go. Well, why would you paint you know a picture of like the side of the motorway? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Talk about the side of the motorway. Let's have a look at it. So let's. I'm going to cover up myself slightly here, but let's discuss this one. Mm -hmm. So this one is called Divine Intersection. A uh, bit of a story on that. Like I was going to the Christmas party at work. My team uh, go big at Christmas, so I was. It was in Manchester, and I thought I don't want to drive all the way back from Manchester. And it was a rail strike, so I took the National Express. So I was on the M32, so that's the motorway coming out of Bristol, uh, on the National Express, and I saw that. I've got to take a picture of that. Uh, so Divine Intersection is because the Divine Comedy, the band, did that song, the National Express. Oh. So when I was painting that, I was constantly like, on the National Express, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bit of a theme tune while I was painting yeah. it. But really, that's like, because, I mean, the main message here is yeah. follow Jesus. Um, and actually, if you go about... 200 yards further that way there's a mosque so it's kind of like oh it's sort of like and also it's a bit of a scrapyard from the right and it's like i'm kind of looking at it like we'll follow jesus yeah. it's um it's a very hopeful message yes. in what would um you know there's not Amongst a huge the amount of hope of, there yeah, is it? like, yeah it's like a forgotten building I, I don't even know what it is actually i think it was a karate i think there might be taekwondo in there because oh, wow. what i find is after I go on Google Maps street yeah. and go, what is that? Oh, it's, yeah. And that's what it is. And do street view. And that's and nice paint. to know after. You just get yeah. the first impression of the building and the scene and you paint that. Yeah, I, kind of something catches my eye. Is. And I, I was just like, I just really like, I, I just like all the stories in the graffiti. Mm. And, you know, there's, 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 there's tags that you see around Bristol. Yeah. So there's Ask uh, on there. But they, you, that's a group um, of of. of guys and and and, and, uh, and you see it around you kind of i just like the fact it's like um nothing stays there that long so you, there was a bridge about here mm -hmm. that's you know i think in the noughties it had huge banksy on it oh wow that's where it's from. Yeah. And, and then that gets covered by other tag artists it's kind of it's just an always evolving story and i just kind of like to capture what then what bristol is it's not like what if Bristol tourist board would be, you know, the harbour, balloons. Yes. And I'm like, well, yeah, it is. But then it's, Bristol's like got this vibe. It's kind of, it's quite, it, it's got an edge to it. And that's kind of what I'm trying to, like, just be honest with the painting, really. And I that's guess. nice because, you know, in five years' time, all these tags would have been painted over and It'll over and over again. It'll probably be student accommodation, to be honest. <laughs> It'll be knocked down. <laughs> yeah, it'll but be it's, knocked down. But this is, like you say, this is Bristol. And I like that you've actually put all the tags in of all the... 
Yeah, yes. I mean, I, I mean, they any of them that do it, it doesn't that doesn't look like my tag. But um, mm. I quite like graffiti as well because like nobody can say you got it right or wrong. True. Or it's like a like a, a car. You go, that doesn't look like a, that doesn't yeah. look like a Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. okay, yeah, true. But like you know, you can be a bit more organic with it, so it's a bit more forgiving. Oh. I just love the color of like of the graffiti. And there's a place in another painting which is called Wonky Bridge, which is we've got the suspension bridge, and then it's got this 1950s concrete. It's all tags and well, street art really, yeah. and it's like a breeding ground for the artists. And if you go there and go like two weeks later, it's like entirely changed. It's like an etch a sketch almost. Really? You know, like do the etch a sketch and then wipe it. It's just nothing stays constantly there. Constantly evolving. Constantly evolves. It's, it's such a vibrant kind of creative community. Oh, I'm not involved in it, but <laughs> I I'm just an are. observer and just kind of, <laughs> I want to like put it on a pedestal and say, look, guys. Yeah, this actually, is it. Some people would never look at that and go, oh, that's graffiti, that's yeah. vandalism. But it's like, no, it's actually real art. That's, this is art. That's, pe that's like the real narrative on the street. It's not like curated. That's just, that's what's currently happening. So yeah. I love that. Right, let's move this one out. Thank you so much. I mean, that was just such an incredible story. This one definitely tells a story. Um, mm. Can you run through it for us, please? Yeah, well, this one's like, um, is a, I was kind of, I was a bit, you know, current affairs affect you and what have you. And um, I think if you watch that ITV drama, the, what's it called, Mr. I can't think it's Mr. Bates? Mr. No. The post, the post, the post office, office scandal, scandal. yeah. And it was shocking, and weirdly, uh, I did work for the company Fujitsu years and years and years ago. Oh. Um, nothing to do yeah. with it, but I was like, so I was like, oh god, I want, you know. For yeah. That. Um, and it sort of just touched me, and I was like, um, I just wanted to sort of like recognize it. So this is called um, "Of Mice and Men," uh, and really, what's going on is you've got. I'm allowed to say the name, Paula Vanell, who, who's, who, who's the head of the post office at the time, the scandal. She's holding her CB. She's a rat on top <laughs> of the post box. Um, if you look closely, somebody that could be Rishi Sunak having a cup of tea. Uh, With the Union on. Jack mug. I Union like Jack that. mug. Peeping yeah, out the window. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> didn't pay for it himself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then the the mice or the kind of post workers, yeah, they've daubed on the on the door. Uh, we could live off of the fat mm -hmm. of the land, which is that's a quote from of mice and mm -hmm. men. And then that's Larry the cat, that the cat which yeah. is the um, what the Downing Street has a cat, that kind of thing. And he's a bit of menace, like so. The it's almost like it's the establishment are comfortable sitting there, comfortable. They're fine. Mm -hmm. It's the small guy that's getting. Squeeze and there's maybe maybe there's a bit of an energy for them saying, you know, what, yeah. we've had enough of this. We kind of we want to have a, have a bit of a say about this, um, and maybe it's time for a change. So maybe Paul Vanell's going to get knocked off. I don't know. But oh, but, I love that you're the artist and you don't even know it. Could the story could be kind of taken on, you know, in people's minds. Yeah, I don't I, see. I don't want to be political. Yeah. So, so that one's really dangerous. But like, there's another one I've done that's um, that I'd like them to be. The pair, they could be read either way. Yes. Not, I mean, that can't really be read as like pro. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not just political, but it's just the post office scandal. Everyone knows it so well. And mm. you were saying earlier that you wouldn't want to do abstract stuff because you want to know what the story is behind it. But yeah, yeah, you've heard that very complex story and you've managed to make it into this. So you feel like, I feel like you do have the mind for it. Like, yeah. Like, this is very like, I know the story, but I wouldn't think. Right, I'm going to have a little canvas, and this is the way I'm going to tell this entire story. And you have, like, in just such a small yeah. canvas. It's a real skill. Well, thank you. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean the, the tricky thing is, is like, how big is a post box versus the down the street door? Because, like, obviously, there isn't a post box on down the street. No, <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, going, oh, it's that kind of thing. Uh, working out that and making it, but not making it realistic. But yeah. just sort of like a little vignette of a story, really. That's um, and I like to like represent the people. Yeah. So like graffiti represents the people. I, yeah. I prefer that, like of you know that kind of honesty of what's good on, and you know celebrating them rather than the person that's got a nice me medal yeah. for doing their job. Trying to maybe celebrate the people that are doing the work. I guess is what I'm sort of trying to do there. Oh, I love that message. <laughs> no, that is great. And, you know, 
And obviously you've had your kind of solo exhibition as part of the Jewel Prize. How was that feeling to have all your art on the wall and everyone kind of coming out to celebrate you? Yeah, it was it was amazing. It, overwhelming, I guess, because, yeah. you know, a, a year ago I had painted about three paintings um, yeah. and it was like, you know, I applied um, yeah. and was amazingly success lucky and, and then I was like I've been painting all year like for this if yeah. that, this kind of last night in mind um and then never really take a stop to kind of appreciate that journey Moment, and, but yeah. last night was like wow it's like people are actually looking at my paintings so it's your and, first like, kind of solo ex exhibition yeah uh, yeah I mean yeah absolutely I mean apart from you know family and friends not that many people have seen my art really because I've been yeah. waiting to get enough of a body of work to then put it all put it out together there. as like a yeah. yeah it's actually having the collection kind of all together it, yeah that's a real moment it is you. a real moment yeah yeah and I guess you know I'm not one of the youngest people in the competition but I might be one of the youngest artists if, yeah in that yeah, sense because yeah. I had that kind of 20 odd year hiatus <laughs> but you wouldn't know you genuinely wouldn't know I think the yeah. caliber of this prize has just been amazing I mean did you manage to catch up with any other artists or even kind of admire any of the other art when we had that kind of launch um way back when do you kind of know the other artists yeah oh, I've been chatting on on Instagram yeah you know I, I always like say good luck to them yeah. and, and I've had some nice messages last night like Karen Turner was giving oh, me yeah. some advice and oh. what have you ahead of ahead of last night yeah. so that was really nice and actually I think art is a really supportive environment I did the landscape artist of the year thing oh, yeah. last year and that was like good fun that was like plein air outside which was a completely different kind of uh thing but um it was it was just fun because people it's not as competitive as other disciplines art's yeah. quite a is a it's it's a kind of collegiate type thing yeah and you can if somebody else does something that's really good you just go wow look at that yeah. you don't go well oh, that's you know i want mine to be better it's just art is quite uh, that's the thing what i love about art you know because in business it's all quite target driven yeah. and what have you is art's just the expression of of anything for people and just like i really love the fact that um this the debel prize is really just opened my life to art again yeah just like i'm getting a bit emotional see and now you've got like a kind of new community of like <clears throat> artists as well yeah, like I mean, you you know these are your peers and you're in amongst them as well and absolutely there's amazing artists that are just like i'm like i do have that imposter syndrome like well, I do don't, you? yeah massively but um but it's just really reassuring that they're like you yeah. know it's great Neil and yeah. stuff so it's there it's lovely i'm just really enjoying it i mean it really is and what would you say kind of your goals are for the future I just yeah I, I um I think as as the years progress I kind of feel like I'm um I've got uh much more confident in who I am who I am as a painter um and I think you know I do want to represent um as I said before like the the real world around me and, and it, I sometimes pause and look at things like I mean because you're so busy with life and kids and family and work and pause and just appreciate things and I want to celebrate those moments really and and, and bring that alive in, in my art um I want to kind of maybe get out of Bristol a little bit as yeah. well so um you know go around uh, the country um and and just sort of just explore it with art yeah. and and, and uh, you know I don't know the sky's the limit you know big canvases small I hope small canvases who knows might even do a bit of abstract Ooh. Oh. To. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't wait to see what you do next, Neil. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>